I have a Minolta MC Telerocker QD F3.5 135 millimeter lens that I'm going to be fully disassembling. You can see that this is one of the MC rockers with the first generation metal body design. So it has the metal ring going around here, the focusing ring, um, and the metal body design of the early earlier rockers. Um, this is also the cheaper of the 235 millimeter lenses that they had. They had a 2.8 version as well, but this is the 3.5. Um, it's overall pretty a pretty good telephoto lens, um, and internally it's very similar in a lot of its construction to the normal, like the 55 millimeter MC rockers and a lot of those other lenses. But because it is a telephoto lens, it is a little bit harder to take apart. Um, but it's a fairly easy lens to um, to take apart and repair. I'm going to be fully disassembling this lens to get access to all the individual components, to the glass, um, to the mechanical components, and also remove all these individual body sections so that they could be cleaned on their own. To start with, I'm going to go in and get access to the aperture blades since there might be oil or something on those. And I'm going to start by going in through the front of the lens um, and actually lift out the entire aperture mechanism. There's really no way to get access to the blades easily from the back of the lens. It's a lot easier to just go in from the front. So here on this name ring going around, you can see that there's two little tiny grooves on this. And I'm going to use a spanning wrench on and just unscrew this name ring. Okay, so that just lifts out. Now you can see in here, I have the entire front glass group going around here. Um, and there's actually two separate rings on here. There's this inner ring, which kind of has a few little grooves and things on it, which ha um, also has two divots here and here. And then there's this outer ring. And the outer ring is what actually removes the entire front glass group. So that's what I want to unscrew. The inner ring um, actually removes just the, it, um, it holds the front glass piece itself in place. So if there's a uh, fungus or something dust inside of the glass here, you might want to try removing that. But in this case, I'm going to just remove the entire group um, to get access to the aperture blades. Okay. So you can see that's the entire front glass group of the lens. It's actually kind of small for a lens of this size, but now you can see I have access to the front of the aperture blades. Um, and because they're so far down inside the lens in this case, and because it's so easy to actually remove them, um, I wouldn't recommend cleaning them at this stage. Um, I'd actually wait and hold off and uh, get access to the aperture blades when I lift out the entire diaphragm mechanism. Um, so to do that, I'm going to remove this ring here, which is what the filters screw into, this black ring going around here. Um, and it's just held in place by three screws going around here. You can see that there are six screws total, but um, three of them are kind of recessed down into here into the ring going around. So I only want to remove the ones on top of the ring. Okay, so that just lifts out. And now if I focus all the way in to get, just extend this piece in the center up a little bit, you can see that the other three screws are now what is actually holding the diaphragm assembly in place. So. Um, there's this uh, metal ring going around here, and then I can just lift the diaphragm assembly out once I remove these three screws. So I'm going to remove these. And remove this uh, metal ring going around here. And here, let me get that other screw. And now the entire diaphragm assembly just lifts right out of the lens. So it's pretty easy to actually get access to the diaphragm assembly. And there still is this back piece. I'm just going to set aside the lens body for a second. This back piece here on the diaphragm assembly um, that has the back glass piece, which is also pretty small. Um, but to just remove that and get the optics on their own um, away from the diaphragm, I'm going to use the spanning wrench on these two divots here. And that's going to take off this entire back column. Um, so it'll just lift right off and we'll have the diaphragm and the glass on its own. Okay, so now I have access to the front and back of the aperture blades. So if there's any oil or anything on here, I could clean them or I could even choose to disassemble the aperture. Um, it's held in place by three little screws going around here. I could take that apart and actually disassemble the entire aperture. But in this case, it's not necessary since the 
Um, the diaphragm's in pretty good condition. Everything seems to be opening and clo closing pretty smoothly. And I also have access to this back glass piece as well, so I can try to clean, um, if there's dust or anything in there, I could try to clean that out. So going back to the main lens body, see that on the back of the lens there's not too much I can take apart. So what I actually want to do on this lens, it makes it a little bit different than the other Minolta lenses that I've taken apart, the normal 55s and the portrait lenses, is um, go here on the side and there are three black screws going around. So there's one, there's two, and then the third is right there. And I want to undo these three and this is actually going to detach the entire uh, mounting plate and aperture control ring from the focusing uh, mechanism and the focusing ring. So that's a really nice feature actually because you can take this apart um, and get access to the internals of the lens just by undoing these three screws um, even before you take off the name ring or any of that stuff on the front of the lens. So here now I've separated the back section which has the aperture control ring, the mounting plate, and all the mechanical parts that are coupling the stop down lever and aperture control ring to the diaphragm and the front part here which has the focusing ring and the actual focusing mechanism at this point. So I'm going to set this front section apart. I'm going to actually later take off this body section but for now I'll just concentrate on the back of the lens. Um, down, let me flip this over. Down on the back side of the lens, you can see the there's a plastic tube here, which kind of uh, keeps uh, debris and other things out of the inside of the lens. And it just hel is held in place by these three screws going around here. I'm just going to remove that first, so I have um, it's a little bit more space to work with. Now you can see on this back section that there aren't other, any uh, screws on this back plate. Um, and what's actually holding on the aperture control ring is this silver ring going around here. Um, so it's just held on by these three little slotted screws going around here, but they're pretty small um, and they're kind of recessed down into the lens or into the, uh, this ring going around, so you have to have a pretty small screwdriver to get access to them. So I'm just going to undo these three uh, slightly, and I don't want to undo them all the way because they're a pain to get back in into their little slots as well. So I just want to do the, undo these enough to be able to lift out, lift off this uh, back ring. That ring should just lift off. There we go. And now you can see the aperture control ring going around here on this outside section. And I still can't lift it off um, because uh, there's actually a metal piece that goes, it's attached to the aperture control ring right here um, and goes to the inside here. Uh, and that's preventing me from being able to remove the aperture control ring to clean, to clean it or um, fix any of the mechanical problems that it might be having or adjust it. So I'm going to undo these two screws um, right here and here. Just remove those screws and now uh, the metal piece is sitting in here should just be uh, kind of loosely going around and if I flip this over you can see the metal piece is down right in here so along next to this curve and it's kind of held in place by there's a little bar right here um, so you ha might have to turn the aperture control ring back and forth and just kind of work this metal piece out until you can actually remove it fully. There we go. And what this metal piece is actually doing is it sits on the aperture control ring and it's locked to the aperture control ring. Um, and as that moves back and forth, there's a little bar on this intersection here that moves back and forth along this curve, which opens and closes the aperture. So as this bar moves up and down, it opens and closes the aperture. And I'll talk a little bit more about that during the reassembly and what all has to be coupled back together properly. But now I can go back and on the back of the lens, I can remove the aperture control ring. I can just lift it right off, um, but there is a little ball bearing on, um, I think on this side over here that I have to be careful not to lose. I'm gonna just lift this off. And the ball bearing is right here. It actually sits on the aperture control ring. So you can see the ball bearing right there, and I'm just gonna set those components aside. 
So the one other thing that you can do on this lens is you can take off the back mounting plate right here. This this piece, the thing, the um, bayonet mount that's actually coupling to the lens. Um, and that's actually attached by, there's three screws down, or four screws going around here. Um, but usually that's not necessary. If there's any problems, um, with the lens and it's not the aperture is not fully opening or fully closing one thing that could be happening is that something is broken in this section of the lens of the lens so that either there's a lot of friction between um, the main lens body and these silver rings or one of the springs over here you can see there's a little wire that kind of uh, holds it back open um, in the, its standard state uh, that might be broken or there's something going wrong um, but usually it's going to be the aperture or the diaphragm mechanism itself that has oil on it or it's just not moving smoothly rather than the mechanical parts of the lens. Continuing on uh, with the disassembly I only have one more piece and that is the focusing section here which has both the focusing ring what I see on the outside of the lens and the actual um, the part that the focusing mechanism that goes up and down inside and moves the optics back and forth and the way that this works is there's a on the intersection here there's a little uh, uh, knob that sticks out here and it you can see that when I hit 1.5 uh, meters which is the closest that you can focus it kind of hits against this thing this uh, wall here and stops and the same happens at the other end um, so at infinity it stops and that's actually a, a nice feature um, for being able to re-zero the lens back to infinity because it makes it a little bit easier to go in here um, and just line things up correctly because I know I'm locked at infinity right now um, so uh, once I remove the the, ep the focusing ring here um, it won't be as difficult to zero it back to infinity so I'm going to detach the focusing ring that you grip onto from the focusing mechanism of the of the lens and that's just held in place by three screws going around here on the inside of the lens and these are a little bit harder to remove just because they're pretty far down inside the lens So you can see they have a little washer and I can just remove those and set those aside. So at this point I have the lens pretty much fully disassembled. I have the two main mechanical pieces, um, the back of the lens, the mounting plate and the aperture control mechanical section and the focusing mechanism here. I have the main body sections, I have the aperture control ring and the focusing ring and the other body sections. I have the diaphragm uh, mechanism separate so I could clean that and make sure that that's working properly. And I have the two optical pieces separate as well so I can uh, make, if there's any dust or fungus or anything on those, I could try to clean those off. So now I'm going to start with the reassembly of the lens. Um, and it's fairly easy. Uh, the hardest part is probably getting the little uh, aperture control bar back in the correct slot um, and making sure that that's lined up correctly. And there are a few tricks that you have to be aware of so that everything works properly. Um, but overall, it's not too bad. And I'm just going to start by putting back together the focusing mechanism. So you remember I took this apart um, and I had it set in infinity when I took it apart. Uh, and that is just going to be a general guide to help me line this up. So I'm going to slide this on top of the, the focusing uh, ring on top of the focusing mechanism and just have it lined up kind of at infinity um, and get those three screws back in place with their little washers um, and lock it down at this position. I'll be able to go back um, and adjust this to actually be zeroed at infinity properly later too. Um, but for now, I just want to get this started. Next, I'm going to reassemble the back section of the lens here. So on the back section of the lens, what I want to do at this stage is get the aperture control ring on and locked in. Um, it's just going to sit down on top of here, but it's a little bit more challenging because there are a couple things that actually have to get lined up um, for this to work. The first thing is there's a little screw over here on this side, and that's what actually limits how far back and forth the aperture control ring can turn. Um, so I, there's a little uh, slot in the aperture control ring that I have to slide over that screw and you can see it clicks as it goes to the two extremes. 
Second, there's this uh, little curved piece, um, and it has two sides. It has this intersection, um, or the section that sits on the aperture control ring like this on the outside of the lens, and then the intersection, which is actually inside the lens, um, which has the, the aperture control curve on it. Um, and this one has to actually be threaded through, there's a, a slot in the main body section over here. So it has to go through this slot um, and be coupled to the outside section. And then also um, in the inside section, uh, the way that this works is that as the um, curve moves back and forth with the aperture control ring, so as this kind of rotates back and forth in the lens, um, it, uh, this post on the inside moves back and forth along the curve. Um, so this has to be behind this post as well. And then finally, there's the ball bearing. Um, and that's what I'm gonna actually try to get first is the ball bearing, and I'm just gonna get the aperture control ring in place before worrying about the curve. Um, so the ball bearing rests in a little pocket right here on the aperture control ring. And the ball bearing is pressed up against these grooves on the inside of the lens right here. Um, so for this first stage, I just want to get the ball bearing kind of lined up, and I also want to make sure that um, this is lined up so that the section here, uh, which the, with the indentation, goes over the screw. Um, and those two should line up pretty nicely. So here, let me slide this over. One more try. Okay, so now I have those two lined up, um, but it's not actually locked in place yet. Um, and what actually holds this on um, is this metal piece here. Uh, so I have to get that in position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, on the inside of the lens, I'm going to hold this open and just adjust this to all the way open here and kind of just drop this metal piece down and try to get it lined up on the inside so that it's coming out through on the outside of the lens on the aperture control ring. Now, with that kind of lined up, I'm going to get the two screws uh, that go in here and just get those, uh, get those started. Um, I can't lock it down quite yet because you can see that it's not really lined up properly. So I'm just going to get these started. Now once I'm happy uh, that this is all set in the proper spot, I can actually lock these down. Um, and this could be one area where the aperture might not be controlled properly um, if this bar is not um, aligned properly in here. Um, so you can go in and adjust this later. But what you want to look for is that when you move the aperture control ring back and forth, it actually moves this intersection here. So if I hold this center section steady, you can see that the intersection is moving um, with this post here, which is actually what's going to be coupling to the diaphragm mechanism to control the aperture. And now I should also be able to uh, not lift off the aperture ring as it sits here because of this bar on this side. And finally, with the reassembly of the back of the lens, I'm going to just put on this other metal ring um, that goes around the outside, and it doesn't really have to go in any particular orientation, um, but this lens does have a little bit of a, a dent. You can see somebody dropped it, so I'm going to try to line those up just so that they're together. And now, can reattach um, this metal bar going around. Then you don't want it to be too tight. Uh, you don't really, really want to press it down because um, that could cause some problems with the aperture control ring. But at the same time, you don't want the aperture control ring to be loose either. So just finding the right balance um, is important for this, uh, for this piece. Okay, and I can check, make sure that it's clicking as I turn. And then, like I showed before, that the aperture control ring is moving, uh, or the aperture control inside is moving properly back and forth as the aperture control ring um, is moved. Now I'm going to reattach the two sections of the lens. Um, so I have the focusing section over here and the um, just the aperture and mounting plate over here. Uh, and the two things that really need to get lined up for this are the screws um, going around here. Um, but there's also this 
you can see the metal bar kind of protrudes out of this back section over here. And then on this focusing section, um, there's a ring going around here, but it has a indentation or a gap right in this section. And those two need to line up so that the metal bar goes into the gap. And that's how you figure out which of the uh, screw holes you should use. So I can kind of get that lined up and then just turn that. And now I've got everything set there. The next part is to actually get the diaphragm mechanism back down into the lens. Um, and you can see that on the diaphragm mechanism it has this post here that is actually what um, controls the aperture size. And that post has to go down into that bar that was um, sticking out of the back section of the lens before. It, has, it goes between these two little, you can see, between those two little things um, in there. And it just locks in place. But the one kind of odd thing about this is, let me get this out. Um, it doesn't really have a set position that it has to be locked into. And that actually, like once I get it in here, that allows you to adjust how the aperture opens and closes. Um, so that is something that um, does allow you to also adjust how the aperture um, is controlled. So before I put together the back, or before I put the aperture mechanism back in, I'm going to reattach the back section uh, with the back glass piece. So I'm just gonna screw this into the um, into the diaphragm mechanism and lock it down using a spanning wrench. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this, I'm going to remove the back lens cap and looking in from the back of the lens, I'm going to start pushing in the diaphragm mechanism and get this lined up so that it, the post of the diaphragm mechanism goes between those two um, bars on the inside section of the lens. And that's really what needs to line up there. And I'm also going to just focus out here. That makes it a little bit easier. So now I can put back on this back lens cap. And on the front section of the lens here, I can now uh, start reattaching this. So I have the metal ring with the three screws, the three alternating screws going around in any of the three uh, positions in here. So I just, I'm going to get this metal ring, get the screws kind of started in there outside of the lens. Okay, and I'm just going to pick any three positions along here. And I'm not going to tighten this down all the way quite yet, so I just want to get these started. So I'm just going to slightly loosen up these so that the intersection here with the diaphragm mechanism can actually turn, or that I grab it, I can move it back and forth still. Now with the lens set to being fully open at 3.5, I'm going to move this intersection back and forth until I have um, the edges of the aperture blades just barely off the edge of the lens um, and then tighten that down. So this really allows you to adjust how the aperture opens and closes, how far um, it opens and closes from 3.5 to F22. So I think I'm a little bit off there, um, so I'm going to loosen this up. Try again. Now let's see. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to lock this down now and tighten down this section. And now I'm going to put this other section with the filter, uh, it holds the filter rings back on. Um, so I'm going to line this up with the other three screws um, that go in place and just reattach this with the three screws on top of it going around. And this is just a little bit easier to do before putting back in the glass. Um, you can also try to do it in the reverse order as well. Um, and if you are focusing the lens back to infinity, um, you would just put in the glass first and then go out and focus the lens back to infinity by um, undoing the screws down in here and spinning around the focusing mechanism independently of the, uh, of the focusing ring um, until it's focused correctly to infinity. Um, but in this case, because it has that kind of unique uh, focusing setup, I didn't need to do that. And now I'm going to just put the front glass piece back in. Kind of have to drop it down and line it up inside of the lens. So once I get this started, I can use the spanning wrench. Use the spanning wrench now to just lock this completely in place. 
Okay. And finally, for the front of the lens, I'll take this name ring and just screw this back in place as well. And also use the spanning wrench on this. Okay, so this is looking pretty good on the front of the lens. There's just one more thing we have to do, and that's to put this little black plastic piece in um, on the back of the lens. So it goes down like this on the back of the lens and it has three screws that have to be reattached. Um, and that just keeps uh, debris and other things out of the inside of the lens. All right, so that has the reassembly complete. You can check and make sure that it's focusing properly, stopping at 1.5 and at infinity. Um, and then when it's mounted on the camera, it's also focusing to infinity correctly. And that the aperture control ring is behaving as expected. If there are any problems with the aperture control ring, the first place I would look is that um, the part where I tighten the diaphragm mechanism back down into the, into the lens. Just by moving how the aperture control or the whole diaphragm mechanism sits in the lens, you can really control um, a lot about how the aperture opens and closes. So that's the Minolta Telerocker QD F3.5 135 millimeter lens. Overall, this lens is uh, pretty easy to repair. It has a lot of nice features that make it um, easy to repair. The construction is very simple, and it has things like um, the three screws going around here uh, on this back section that just allow you to detach the two sections of the lens and get access to the um, internals really, really quickly. Um, the rest of the construction, too, is very sim uh, simple and similar in a lot of ways to the 55 millimeter Minolta normal length lenses and the portrait lenses. Some of it is a little bit more challenging because you have uh, screws and other things that have to be um, attached really far down inside the lens, but overall um, it's a very repairable lens. So if your copy has any problems with it, um, it's not too hard to take apart, diagnose the problem, and repair it.